This video is a part of inefficient versus efficient practice series. And previous two parts were about how to correctly analyze and learn a piece, and in this last part we're going to talk about how to practice at the last stage of practicing, when we have a week or so before our first performance. Again, if you're interested in how to exactly rehearse a piece, you can find it on my YouTube channel as well. So how do we usually feel and practice before upcoming performance? Well, in general, we would feel very insecure and anxious, especially if this is a new piece we never performed before and the upcoming performance is very important. We would easily get frustrated and panic if we don't feel any improvement after practicing, or sometimes it might get even worse the next day after practicing. There are always very annoying difficult sections in a piece that seem to be impossible to fix and scare us to death by just thinking about them, making us being afraid to play the whole piece. And because practicing in fear and anxiety affect our arm muscles, it all might get even worse when we start feeling aching pain in our hands or shoulders. And last but not least, Fear, anxiety and frustration affect our daily life as well, making us more tense, less secure about our piano skills and even our life itself. That's why we need to have a simple system to practice at this stage. The whole system comes down to this simple practice. Play the whole piece non-stop, notice difficult sections, practice those sections afterwards. Repeat the same routine again, that could be two to five rounds a day. So today we're going to talk about how to correctly play the whole piece, how to efficiently practice difficult sections, and how to keep hands in the best possible shape. Now, if generally you feel not comfortable while playing, it's already another topic, and that's the reason I've created the Piano Well System and posted hundreds of hours of videos and programs that teach Piano Well System uh, for free here in this channel. So for the sake of saving time in this video and focusing only on the current topic, let's skip this broad problem today. Let's quickly remind ourselves what exactly are those three stages of practicing a piece. At the first analyzing stage we imagine notes, internally sang them while playing, aligned hand movements, analyzed phrasing and form of the music. At the second learning stage we diligently repeated smaller and bigger sections in different tempos, getting all the pieces together, letting all the tasks from the first stage go to skills. So in the last rehearsing stage, after we have created the body of playing, it's time to breathe in the soul to that body. Start with taking a break from playing for a couple of days, that will cool down your head and let every task settle, become easier, smaller and more solid. Just uh, like muscles would actually grow on break days when we don't exercise them. When start playing again, bring in soul to your playing, let go all the tasks from your mind, because it's already in the skeleton of the body, in the muscles and sensation memories. Focus only on inner world, on the energy in between notes, freely creating and improvising music you play. This way of playing makes all the difference. My video titled Pushing vs. Pulling Playing shows the difference in playing with focusing only on executing all the tasks perfectly that pushes audience away and playing with open heart with focusing only on free, creative energy that drags audience to our playing. So playing with pushing feeling is when you really tune into what you need to do while playing. Like I would think about, okay, I need to think about this and that. <laughs> and uh, this is how it would sound like. And I would try to make it everything like very accurately and properly.
our heart with freedom which pulls the hearts of audience we need to switch our attention to absolutely abstract feeling something that is deep within you <laughs> I know all of you can understand so and basically while playing you simply speak out your heart so let's just experiment and see the difference and forget about everything <laughs> you see my mind is still like okay tasks tasks just erase it just erase it completely just pick out your heart changes the sound, how that changes the sound, how that changes how you feel while I'm playing. So yeah guys, so let's talk about this right now, <laughs> how to achieve this kind of play. So let's say we have played the whole piece and noticed some parts that are not comfortable to play or not played fast enough. This is how we need to efficiently practice them. Find out what exactly needs to be fixed which leap or turn is not comfortable, apply musical speech and position change. Repeat the section carefully, bring it to original tempo, and practice the section in the context of a bigger section. If you're following the piano system, you have an idea of what musical speech and position change are about, and you know that you can apply both of them to ease any uncomfortable turns and leaps. Find out which interval needs to be felt more clear and start intonating it better with musical speech, moving elbow faster and with a bigger amplitude on a position change note. After fixing intonation movement in that interval, start repeating the section in different tempos from slow to fast. When you feel that you can now play it easy and freely, start playing from added sections and you will find out that even if you manage to make the section itself it's only half of the way because playing it within the context of a bigger section would be felt absolutely different so just keep repeating a bigger section in different tempos and keep remember that complete result will be seen only the next day Hands hygiene will not only prevent your hands from injuries, but will also ease your playing generally. Make a following routine, keeping in mind to have rest days to let muscles grow.
and watch hands while practicing, take breaks and make this relaxing exercise. clear and precise sensations and fingertips while playing, watch for slipperiness of keys and fingertips. And drink enough of water. Just take a segment of an orange and squeeze it. I'm not going to show it here, <laughs> but you just squeeze it in your cloth, clean it. And then you wipe around the keys and um, after it's dry after five seconds that orange juice will create stickiness of your fingers and the keys uh, and that will solve our problem and if for some reason um, you cannot make it at your teacher place then I would definitely suggest you at least dip your fingertips into the meat of the segment, get juice, let it dry for like half a minute right before starting playing. That will help you as well. Um, and for sure, if you are performing on the stage, I suggest you to make the same and to clean the keyboard, make it sticky right before you're playing. And uh, moreover, you could even use the same cloth in the breaks between pieces. You know, like, ta -da, you know, <laughs> and then put them back. All right, guys, another little hack to make your piano life easier is simply drinking enough water. Somehow it would um, bring more energy to fingertips. Of course, again, it will make it less dry and less slippery, but eventually it will create very clear and precise sensation on the tip of your finger while playing. It's so, so nice to feel while playing. Six 500 milligrams glasses of water, which by the way does not look as much as I would think it would look. This is 500 milligrams, I would never believe. Anyways, these six cups of water will make three liters of water for you to drink every day. And keep in mind that the effect from drinking water will be noticed only the next day. So the rule is easy, guys. You want to feel good tomorrow, take care of that today. <laughs> That's it for today. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.